In this video, seeing how indoor season is about to come upon us, I want to share with you some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years on how to approach indoor archery differently than outdoor archery so you can shoot higher scores indoors this year. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery, and we're going to make this channel a great resource to all types of archery. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. I'd appreciate it. So I've learned a lot of things over the years on how shooting indoor archery is different than shooting outdoor archery. And I'm going to share with you how I approach the indoor game differently than the outdoor game. So the outdoor game is a very subconscious type of shooting. You're, you're letting that sight pin just kind of float. You're really focused on the form and you're really worried about or not necessarily worried, but you're focused on yourself, what you are doing and what you're feeling and what you're thinking. Indoor archery is slightly different. Indoor archery requires a higher level of aiming and a bit more precision than outdoor does. So outdoors, if I'm aiming at you, the camera, the center of the target, and I'm letting my sight pin float, as long as I'm maintaining my focus on where I want that arrow to go, even if my sight pin is outside of the middle, when the shot breaks, my subconscious brain will take over and flick it into the middle. I'm not talking about throwing bow arms or putting English on the arrows. I'm talking the small, minute, little things that your body just does to adjust to make that arrow go in the middle. I've already shared the story of how my sight pin was in the black low at the Olympics when I maintained my tension and direction, and I still shot a 10. There's no way on earth if my sight pin was that far out of the middle at 20 yards or 18 meters that that arrow would still be in the 10 ring. If my sight pin's in the 8 ring when it goes off, it's going in the 8 ring. That sight pin's got to be in the middle when it goes off. Otherwise, I'm not going to shoot high scores. So I found that I really have to pay attention to how I'm aiming, how tight my aiming pattern is, pay a bit more attention to my stabilizer setup, actually physically and consciously try to aim and keep that sight pin in the middle. Because if my sight pin drifted very far outside the middle, I guarantee I wouldn't be shooting a 10. Noting that you have to really maintain more focus and more intense, deliberate control over your bow arm and where that sight pin is when it goes off is really important to note and you really got to make sure you pay attention to that. Another thing that I found that is very different between indoor and outdoor is the level of importance on maintaining rhythm and timing and the entire control of the end as a whole. You know, outdoors, you've got all sorts of influencing factors. You got crosswinds, you got rain, you got sun, you got delays because of who knows what. Indoors, in general, there's a lot less delays. There's a, and definitely no wind and any of those other things. So I found that it's more important to control the rhythm and timing and the flow of the round as a whole, the end as a whole, and then each end together as a whole. Instead of really approaching each individual arrow, checking your flags, checking whatever, and making sure everything is adjusted exactly how it needs to be for each individual shot, indoors I find is a bit more of a flow throughout the round. If you can get into a rhythm, if you can get into that state of where it's just kind of happening, you're going to shoot really high scores there. So there are things that you can do to work on controlling that like maintaining your blood glucose level about the same, not having insulin spikes and things like that. So don't change your diet a whole lot throughout the round. You know, really trying to control those type of, of things that you can to maintain your internal balance throughout the entire round. And also maintaining your focus, maintaining your control, and just really approaching the whole thing as an entire collective and not necessarily each individual arrow. Yes, each arrow is its own. Each arrow has to be treated with the same level of care that the previous and the future arrow will be. And that's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is if you can try to control the day, the round, the whatever, the half, you'll be better off and you'll shoot higher scores because of it. Now, something that I have found that is different from indoors and outdoors is that I found that I cared less about my equipment indoors and that cost me more points than I'm willing to admit meaning I had more bent arrows that I uh, should have noticed earlier on in my career, or I had a vein falling off, or a knock that was loose, or a knock that was nicked, or, or damaged, or something. I don't know why, I just found that when I shot something closer, around, a closer round, I was a little less careful and a little less uh, finicky about my equipment. 
Later on in my career, I grabbed every single arrow, one with a point in it, and as I was walking back from the target, I'd take each individual arrow and give it a spin check. Okay, that one's straight, put it in my quiver. Take the next one, that one's straight, and so on. Clean off the points. Really, really just making sure that every little thing that I could control, I was. And I found that that made a huge difference in scores, especially at the very high level. You know, a lot of people shoot aluminum arrows indoors, and aluminum arrows bend and they take the bend as opposed to carbon arrows or uh, AC arrows are a little more difficult to bend. Bending these are very common. Dinging the side of them is also very common, especially if you're shooting three arrows into one spot or if you've just recently tuned. Um, I would check your arrows to make sure there's no dings in the side of your arrows, no marks on your knocks, the knocks aren't loose. Um, things like that can all make a difference. Plus, as we're shooting these soft aluminum arrows into like a hard bale that some of the uh, international shooters have to shoot into, the arrows really only go about this far into the target, and then you gotta really pull on them to get them out of the target because they're buried in there and they're, they're, they basically glued themselves into the bale. So as you're trying to break that arrow free, you're probably bending it. So it's a good idea to give it a spin every single time before you put that arrow in your quiver and get ready to shoot it again. I found that I gained a whole lot more points by just maintaining control over my arrows as well as making sure my uh, brace height was the same. For whatever reason, I just cared less about my brace height indoors and I found that um, you know my sight started drifting throughout the day and if I would have, just like I would have outside, checked my brace height, I wouldn't have been so far off of my mark and had a less than ideal setup on my bow. Outside of that, there's not a really huge difference between outdoors and indoors. There are some things inside that you gotta really pay attention to and make sure that you're ready for. Lighting can change depending on the venue that you're going to. You might be shooting under fluorescent lights one day and then mercury vapor lights another day. And then there might be a parking lot behind you where sunlight's reflecting off of the cars through the windows into your thing, reflecting off of your glass lens that's on your, uh, your sight pin and then good luck seeing through that. I've had that happen to me and shot terrible at a Nationals because of that, embarrassingly. And I just didn't anticipate that type of issue. So maintaining your bag, your quiver, your whatever, full of different options, different sight pins, different fiber optic colors, different fiber optic lengths, different things like that to maintain the ability to still change out a sight pin is something that's extremely important and being able to adjust what your sight pin looks like depending on the lighting conditions can make or break your tournament. Especially if you're going to a new venue, having those options is extremely important in your arsenal in order to be able to adjust and maintain your focus on yourself and your composure and not worry so much about not being able to see. So a word of caution, if you're gonna be changing how intense you are aiming at that 10 ring, you better know that when you go outside, you're gonna to have to have a reworking of your habits. And don't forget what you just learned at the end of that outdoor season that you just had, because as you go back outside, you're going to have to go back to that style of shooting. You can't take your indoor style of shooting outdoors, and you can't take your outdoor style of shooting indoors, unless you have no option. I grew up in Western New York where it snowed a whole lot, and Indoor season seemed to be 60% of what everybody shot because our indoor seasons were so long because it was so cold and had so much snow on the ground all the time. Now, if your main goal is going to the Olympics or you really like shooting outside and you're stuck with shooting indoors, don't change a thing. Continue to look at the 10 ring, let your sight pin float, continue to maintain control, and really just don't change anything. That's totally okay too. You can use indoor shooting as training for outdoors when finally the snow melts. Don't be afraid of that, and that is absolutely an option. Um, just really noticing and being able to recognize that there's a difference between outdoors and indoors is going to pay dividends on both indoor and outdoor, and you'll have higher scores at both indoors and outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell, as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books, and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to. And above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.